someone's come from Leicester to visit the maze and there's no fast track down there and the fence not down there so I can take the fence down there put some sunflowers on it that can stay there for the rest of the day for the kids until we need it for carting grain in a bit dry is nicely chomping through the wheat that we cut yesterday some of it was quite wet it was 28 percent some was 24 so you can oh sorry nearly 30 percent some was 25 you can see bits stuck to the wall that'll just knock off and go through the dryer should be fine that's what's come out looking great forgot it had the baler on so i'll have to drop the baler off it's not too big a job just i'm going to get a bit oily but you basically drop the leg down here which is a little bit awkward on this thing actually the way the pin works but drop that leg down take the pto off all the pipes air brakes draw our pin out nice and slack that's easy sometimes it can be part and it's jammed against itself take that out and off i go so i'll just do it now quick how random tennis balls just dropped out the leg must have got flicked up up there with the pickup reel so where have you come from is that the furthest point from the sea in the country i thought it was then they've come to the sunflower maze andrew's here now with the mini merlot we're going to move some bales of straw from where richard's guarding one into the shade over here so that we've got more shade for people because the sails that we're going to put up haven't arrived yet Second, just gonna put this away. Oh, gone. <laughs> I'll do. It's better. In the shade now, everyone's melting. There you go. Now stand in front of the selfie wall. Brought the 724 back from the maze where it's been kids have been looking at it anyway someone was asking where this came from yesterday for holding the different bottles well there you go it's got the header on the mail i'll take it across the road those are the damaged fairies uh rub the plug a little bit got to cut this wheat here now see what it's like if it's good enough we'll go into the rest of it because the pigeons have been landing over there just brought the header across the road this is where we're going to put all the straw We've actually not brought any straw here yet because it's all been sold straight away. But we're going to carry on tidying up and then we're going to put rows of straw here under hay caps when we bale it. So we'll go and get the combine now and we'll start cutting. It looks rubbish with that number plate on, doesn't it? One of the reasons the DVLA wouldn't let me put it on is it's kind of like a default position. So years ago, the first things on the road were tractors and they all had really good number plates, like one initial and two letters or whatever, or one letter, one initial because after horses, they were the first things, tractors. So because of that, all their expensive reg plates, personalized reg plates, were on tractors. So people were buying tractors, taking the number plates off and ending up with a cheap private reg. So the DVLA cottoned onto this and said, you can't take a number plate off a tractor because it doesn't, anything that doesn't have an MOT. And that meant that then, eventually the tractors got scrapped and they ended up with the number plates back, which then took to auction and sold for a lot of money. So that same rule then makes it that you can't put a private number plate on a tractor unless it slips through the net. We were hoping it would, but it didn't. So I don't know whether everyone should email the DVLA and say it's not fair. I paid £399 for my 21 Lex. Why can't I put it on my combine, even if it's just on it forever and it never comes back off it? I still think I should be allowed to do it. I don't know whether you can see, but there's a stripe of brome there. So last year when we combined it, it obviously grabbed the brome out the edge of the field and then it come out through a bit of the straw here and then when it was bailed it ended up underneath the row of straw and that's why we've got a patch of brome just there so this year we're further over so we'll probably end up with the brome even more into the field as we get a chip so all them weed seeds we basically want them to grow before we sow the next crop a little bit weedy in this corner as well it's a little bit green in the tram lines but it all makes in the rest not so bad on the top of the hill here this is quite clay ground not yielding too bad it's not all yielding that though but this is the ripest which is a little bit confusing because normally the heavy ground hangs on a bit longer when we get dry weather um this, this the lighter soil at the bottom of the hill that's more green so i'm a bit confused by what's going on here anyway it's gobbling it up nicely 
There's the NHS sunflowers in front of us and the wild oats. There's a few people walking around them at the moment. And there's the sunflower maze over there in the dust. If you look at that line there, that's where we backed up when we were spraying herbicide on the wheat. And I backed up too far and I killed some of the grass around the NHS. Blue flowers there. You can see a perfect line there now where it was. Yeah, we're cutting along it there. Like I say, it's all blue. And then there's the other field of sunflowers. And then there's the car park over there. started again and I think that could be why this on the evening they're ripening. Just topping up I think what we'll do because it's still quite wet we're going to cut all the headlands on these three fields so there's a small one there a small one there and this sort of big one here it's about 30 acres and we'll leave it be able to straw up go to bills tomorrow cutting wheat hopefully bail this straw Tuesday morning or tomorrow afternoon before it rains on Wednesday Thursday Friday but at least we've got a bit done, got a bit less, we've got some rain to dry while it's raining next week. The last combine had a laser on that corner and you could press it and it'd steer along and it was really handy on headlands and things. Anyway, I didn't put it on this one because it's got a better GPS, but because of the trees and different things, often you don't use the GPS on the outside. And it's times like this I wish I'd put the laser on, but you can get one now a cab scanner that goes on the top up there and it scans the crop as well. Should have perhaps got one of them rather than the GPS because then that would still work better on headlands. So they have to drive them by eye. There's that bit there again, like I say, that the pigeons are eating, so I might cut the headland and cut that bit just so they've got nowhere to land. Just stop now while I'm waiting for a trailer. If you look, the grain in my hand, you can see the shadow. Some of it's green and some of it's orange and some of it's like crunchy orange. So if I get a piece of crunchy orange now, not that Olivia. You get a piece of that. It's like crunches when I bite it. Because that's ripe. But then we've got the odd one that's like milky. And that'll be, if we go over here, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some in the tram lines that are green. See with the light, probably not very well. But then we've also got some in the middle. They haven't been run on by the sprayer and they're totally white and they're the ones that are ripe. See? So what we're doing anyway, like I say, we're going to cut it. We've got some to dry while it's ready next week and hopefully get this straw bale as well and just leave the middle of the field to ripen a bit more. Just waiting for a trailer at the moment. Just going to say how I'm pleased down with the header. It's got these belts on it and so far I've not even had to adjust them yet. I think we've got about three, four hundred acres and they're still working as, as perfect. Not have to change anything on the knife either because I've not gobbled any soil or gobbled any stones up because obviously it's been flexing perfectly. So yeah, really pleased with it. Not bent any of these, even though you can't really because of plastic. That's pretty good. And there's the trailer. You see the patterns in the stubble where he went around the wet hole when he was drilling. Done the headlands now. I'm just going to go right through the middle. This is the bit where the pigeons have been eating. So hopefully they'll land, but there'll be nothing left for them to eat. Or they'll find another field. But you can see here now, when the dust clears as they get closer, they've basically landed in the tram lines and pulled it completely flat. Started nibbling either way. There's not a lot left. It's like Groundhog Day. I was saying this yesterday as well at the same time when I was putting a field at the tram line that the pigeons have been landing on. It's worse just up there. Here again now, totally thinned out by the pigeons in the middle of the two wheel marks. 
don't know what everyone else is finding, but the pigeons every year around here are getting worse and worse and worse. They're eating more and doing more damage. I think it's because people buy bird seed and feed the birds in the winter, but really it's the big fat wood pigeons that are eating it. And they're breeding well, and they're obviously living all winter, and then they're coming out here and doing all this damage. So if you've got a bird feeder, make sure pigeons can't get to it. There's Olivia and my nephew getting covered in dust. They're walking around to the sunflower maze to do it now, it's shut. When I say shut, I just mean closed for the evening. Is anyone watching that's been to the sunflower maze today? If you have, let me know because we put like a QR code on the tractor. So if you take a picture of it, it'll take you to the YouTube channel. I'm gonna call it a day for today now on these fields. Just like I say, cut around the outside because it's 22 and 24 percent of moisture readings. If the drying floor was working, we'd have just cut the lot while we're in here because I don't like leaving the field and coming back to it. But I don't want a load of wet grain that we're going to be slowly drying going off before we get through it. But that should keep us busy for the next few days anyway. I think we're going to be cutting at bills tomorrow by the airport because that's again is on like land like what I did the other day and that should be a lot drier than this that's kind of kept hanging on a bit more. Got a time lapse now taking the combine header off so you can see how it's done and how the combine folds up. Not sure if you can see behind but the sunflowers are properly in bloom now. I'm just shutting the track up for the night stop people coming down and pooching and pinching my picnic benches. Hello, job. Just wondering what everyone else has been up to this weekend. Obviously, we've been opening the sunflower maze and combining and doing a bit of bailing. What's everyone else been up to? Anything interesting or anything really boring? Painting, maybe? DIY? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Loads of new subscribers again. If you're new, don't forget to say where you are. If you want to watch another video, it's over there. If you want to leave a comment, it's there. You can also, as well, have a virtual tour of the farm. I'll try and put the link below in the bio. So you can have a look around the sheds and different things. Something I did for the NFU last year for the schools. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow.